Sure. Right, I know. Shall we just give uh, one more minute for those who are finishing off their prayers and we'll continue, inshallah, the class. As I said to the brothers and sisters, inshallah, before I say that we are going through a history uh, of revelation today which I feel is imperative to understand in the context of what the reality is only because this will allow us to have a clear understanding of where the world is today. The, the holy text, we believe in the Bible, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to Isa alayhi salam, but what we found out before Asr prayer is that in the translation phase of it, a lot got lost in its first phase from uh, Greek to Latin and then of course from Latin to English and then in 1684 uh, a great chunk, the 14 books uh, of the Bible which we'll talk about at another time and summarize them uh, they were extracted and removed from the Bible so the text is already questionable and then the name of the messenger and the prophet is questionable as you remember here there's Aiso uh, then there is Yeshua, and then there is Jesus, the name Jesus. The name Jesus does not have any roots in any of the previous two names. And nor does Yeshua sound like anything like this word right here, I-E-S-U-S. -S. And then this family calls him Isa because that's what the Quran says. So, upon talking about these two layers of confusion, the confusion in his name, the confusion in his word, Everyone's with me so far? This is going to be a bit more interactive today because it is a bit dry and I'm telling you from the beginning because there's a lot of history here. There's more confusion into who is he to the people that believe in him. How many of us here believe all Christians believe Jesus is the Son of God? Hands up. How many of us feel that he is God to Christians? Okay. A better question, how many of us believe that all Christians believe in Jesus the same way? Okay, that's good. And that takes us to the next. Does all, do all the Christians see him the same? No. According to the Catholics, and I want you to listen to this, as boring as it may be today, because this goes to show the layers of confusion that we are trying to take away to get to the core of the matter. The Catholics believe he is God the Son who became man for us. Sounds easy or confusing? I'm going to leave it to you there. To me it's confusing. And it only gets confusing from there. The Baptists believe that believe in one God and the human and divine nature of Jesus. So they believe there's God, but they believe that Jesus has a human and divine characteristic to his being. The Mormons believe that um, under the direction of our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ created the earth. Uh, Protestants believe that there's a God and there's a Jesus. The Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is a subservient son of God and not God. So Jesus is a mighty God, but there is an almighty God. Does that make any more sense to you all? It's getting confusing. Just keep with me. Orthodox Christians believe in a single God who is both three in one, the Trinity concept, the, tri the triune, triunity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one in essence and undivided. They believe in the dual nature of Christ. So he's 100% God and 100% human. Lutherans, I'm not going to read all of them, Lutherans have uh, the Christocentric belief. The Anglicans believe that Jesus is the only eternal Son of God. Uh, the Presbyterians have their belief. The United, United Methodists have their belief. And the Evangelicals believe God the Son, you hear this one, God the Son became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Just keep to that. I understand it's confusing. We talked about this in the beginning. There is no criticizing of religions here, we're coming to a core matter. The core matter is Dajjal is coming. The Prophet Muhammad spoke about it, every Prophet spoke about it. Dajjal will come, people will be confused between who is Jesus and who is Dajjal. 
and in between there's something called Gog and Magog. So what we're doing here in these next 12 days is to kind of bring forth what the clarity is from the perspective of hex and also bringing it into context. So for those who came late, uh, this is what our class is. This class will happen every day, inshallah, from 5.30 to 7.30. You're welcome to join. Keep in mind there's no audio or video recording or taking pictures of the slides. And inshallah, we'll talk about that at the end of this course as to why. Last point is... On Saturday, for those who will continue, on Saturday we'll do this class from 5 to 6 because I had an engagement at 6.30, which I apologize overlapped with this class. Moving along, did it make any more clear sense? Who is Christian? Who is Jesus? Sorry, yes. Sorry. So remember, the first translation was done within the first hundred years into Greek. And the Greek language had what we would say the chunk of it, the bulk of it. But we saw what happened two, three hundred years after that, before three hundred years after the Greek translation. Latin is where it all got distorted. Instead of going back to the Greek one to find clarity, they just picked one. Uh, and I think Mufi Wasim alluded to this in his class a few days ago. They just picked one, and then the English translation was based off of that. And even when they made the English translation, it just went, it went more deeper into this dark hole. So what you're saying is that there is a more authentic version. How come they're not resorting to it? Is a question that we all will leave just there. Why is that question not being answered? Hopefully the series will help us understand why. But I'm not going to go so much into those intricates because it's already mind-boggling. This is a surface, and I'm trying not to go deep, but yes, your question is legitimate. I, I agree with you. So what do the Muslims believe? And it's imperative for us to know this. Many Muslim children do not. I was in Morocco in 93. We were in a rural town, and I met a kid, and I talked to him about Allah. And he said to me, Allah is not my God. Jesus is my God. And I said to him, how do you say that? He said, my teacher came from Europe and she taught me the world, she taught me English, she taught me religion, and Allah is Jesus. And you would expect in a Muslim country everyone to know, and that's exactly where our failure is. We expect everyone to know. How many people, if you go to a Muslim country without taking names, everyone knows the kalima? How many know how to pray? How many know their obligations? Stop fooling yourself with this thing, there's Muslim countries and everyone knows Islam. There's no chip that Allah puts in a Muslim country in a child that's born dead that this is what Islam is. If you're not learning it, you're not talking about it, you're not teaching it, you're not propagating it, no one knows it. So what do Muslims believe? I think it's important for us to point that out also. Muslims believe that Isa Islam was sent down as a prophet of Allah. He is not Allah, he is not the Lord and he's not the Son of God. Does that make sense to everyone? Let's go on to another layer of confusion. How was he born? So there is a statement in the, uh, the Canicles of the Gospel, which is four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which was named in the second century. Before that, it was not named as anything. It was just four sources. And these four sources came about between the 66th and 110th year after Esau's departure. And they painted a picture of who Jesus was. Have you ever noticed that the Bible talks, Jesus did this, Jesus did that, but the Quran doesn't say Muhammad Sallallahu did this or that? Have you noticed that? Quran doesn't say Muhammad Sallallahu got up today, he went here. It doesn't say that. It speaks about other prophets and people, but it's not a biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu life. But there is a great section of the Bible that speaks as a biography. So the question is, if this was revealed to Jesus, when was it revealed that he ate, he went here, he did this? So that's what we call the historical text, which was compiled at least 66 years after he left, which means there was no eyewitnesses. So I can now sit down here as they are uh, removing, for example, just say they remove um, from global history the word Syria. Syria is in war today. Just say tomorrow there's no Syria. And someone asks your child or your grandchild as a student, can you write about what you think Syria was? 
do you think they'll have a good description? Yes or no? Do you think they'll be anywhere close to the bullseye? They're nowhere close. But what I know about Syria was it had great institutions. Books that we used to get from Syria and from Beirut, from Lebanon, were the best prints. We find that uh, there was great institutions. Many of our students would go there for one year to learn more. It was a vibrant city. There's so much to happen in Damascus. But again, if someone 66 years later writes about it, and then two centuries later they name it Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what is the credibility of it? I'm not going to say. But in this, these so-called narratives, one of the narratives is that Joseph the carpenter uh, married Maryam salam, and he is the legal father of Jesus salam. Now, remember, this is not even a hundred years after the Bible, okay? Quran came another five hundred years after that. The Quran addressed this. Well, they call him Saint Joseph today. What does the Quran say? The Quran says that, that Jesus is the son of Mary who was conceived without any intervention of a human father. The Quran says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا We sent our soul, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam to her, to announce her that he's, she's going to be gifted. لِأَهَبَ لَكِ I'm going to gift you a غُلَامًا zakiya, a pure child. Uh, Surah 19, verse 19. And she said, how can I have a son? No man has touched me and I'm not unchaste. The angel said, this is what Allah has decreed. So we know from the Qur'an, the Qur'an is clarifying these notions. إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَقُصُّ عَلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَكْثَرَ الَّذِي هُمْ فِي يَخْتَرِفُونَ Qur'an says it. This Qur'an is addressing a lot of misconceptions that the Bani Israel was confused about. Qur'an is clarifying it. It's bringing forth clarity. So one of the verses of clarity is that they rejected the faith and they uttered against Maryam a false charge. What's that false charge? Either she, that Joseph is the father, or uh, Joseph the carpenter is the father, or that she slept with someone and had this baby, na'udhu billah. Because Maryam salam is pure. No man has touched her. But this is a notion that you need to understand because that's the notion that's being thrown out. Let's go to a side-by-side -side comparison of texts. What are we trying to do here again, say sisters and brothers? We're trying to understand who Isa Islam is. Why? Because if you know who Isa Islam is, and you know who Allah is, then and only then will you know who Dajjal is. Don't think because you're a Muslim you'll be able to save yourself from Dajjal. It's the greatest test to come on this earth. And those who fail will fail great, and those who succeed will succeed great. It's not a joke. That's why it cannot be you should know or you should, I assume you should know. No, we need to learn this together. So today we're trying to understand Isai Islam for who he is and that he's not God. And tomorrow, inshallah, we're going to understand from the Old Testament and New Testament who is God and how that God cannot be Isai Islam because other branches of Christianity claim him to be just that. Yes. Mm hmm? Um, he is considered a he, but I don't want to give him any credibility, so I'll call him a it, if that sounds better. And if I say he, you make me change it to it, inshallah, okay? Alhamdulillah, thank you. How was Isai Islam born? And as I told you, we're proving from the Bible and the Quran that he's one of the same people. Remember one thing, sisters and brothers. Today, when you talk to Christians, they'll tell their congregations, yeah, the Muslims believe in Jesus, but their Jesus is not our Jesus. They're two different people. No. I can bring my text and fight with you all day, and you can bring your text and fight with me all day. We're not going to get anywhere. It's better that we take their text and prove who Jesus was, inshallah. Does that make sense? So first of all, if he was God, would he have been born like every other human being? So we find in Luke, book 1, chapter uh, verse 6 and 7, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her, to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in a cloth and placed him in a manger. This is what it says in the Bible. 
Yes, everyone's with me? Quran chapter 19, verse 22 to 25 tells us, and I'm not going to go through it. She is now having the pangs, uh, the, I mean, sorry, the, the, the pain of labor, and she's saying, I wish I was dead. I wish I was dead. Who having a husband and a family would say I was dead? She was wishing death upon herself because she was selected for something that the people would not understand. How can you have a child without a father? So Joseph the carpenter is just thrown out by this. Because if he had a husband, she'd be looking forward to a family. Yes? She had no husband. So she's saying, لَيْتَنِي مِتْتُ قَبْلَ هَذَا I wish I was dead. I died. And I was something forgotten. And then a voice came, do not grieve, Allah has given you this river, shake the palm tree and you'll have dates. So we're finding here that it's a human birth on both ends, the Bible and the Quran. Him being a prophet, in Luke book 7, verse 16, uh, 16 to 17, sorry, that's a typo. When she brought the child, it says, they were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared amongst us. What did they say? A great prophet has appeared amongst us. They did not say God is here, nor did they say the Son of God is here. A great prophet appeared amongst us. They said God has come to help us. What does that mean? Allah has sent His help to us. And they called that help a what? A prophet. The news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. This is in the Bible. And what does the Quran say in chapter 61 verse 6? Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you. Allah sending me to you is what? Allah's blessing. Allah sent me to you. It's a blessing from God. And I'm confirming the law which came before me. So again, both the Bible and Quran is speaking the same language here. Are you all on the same page? It is proving he is a prophet. What else is it proving? That he's been sent by Allah in John book 8 verse 42. I have not come on my own, but he, i.e. God, sent me. Every prophet came from who, everyone? From who? Allah, right? Muhammad Sassim didn't walk out of the cave and say, hey, I'm a prophet. Jibreel A.S. came to him, Allah made you a prophet. Musa A.S. walked for light and direction and Allah said to him, I'm Allah, I've selected you, you're a prophet. So the prophets were selected, they were not elected and they were not self-chosen. Here in the Bible, Jesus is saying, I have come not on my own, but God sent me. And in the Quran, Surah 4, verse number 171, O people of the book, commit no excess in your religion, and nor say of Allah anything but the truth. Isa, the son of Mary, is no more than a messenger of Allah and his word. So meaning, he sent from Allah. Did Isa come come from Allah as a messenger to do what he wants? Was he here to fulfill his thing? No. According to John book 8 and 10, verse 38 and verse 18, he states, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Who sent him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, he's here to propagate the message of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does that make sense everyone? He's here to propagate the message of Allah, not himself. And that's important because in the Quran, for Surah 5, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will hold Isa Islam and will say to him, Did you tell your people to worship you and your mom as God beside Allah? Why? Why would Allah hold him? Because a notion has been created that Jesus came for himself and did something. And I want you to remember this thing about Maryam salam because Christians don't worship Mary. Christians don't worship Mary except Except one. There's one branch of Christianity that believes in Mary being sacred and holy. I want you to remember that. Because that's going to come back to make sense seven classes from now, inshallah. So Isai Sam says, Never said I to them except what you commanded me to say. So I'm not here for myself, the Quran is saying, and the Bible is saying the same thing. This command I receive from my father. Now, you hear the translation of father and son a lot, right? You heard that in the Bible? Father and son. Remember, this is a translation from a translation from a translation from the authentic one. Hebrew, Greek, distorted Latin to English. 
What do we have in our Desi culture, for example? My father raised me by telling me, anyone who's older than you is your uncle. Okay? You call everyone uncle and auntie. Now, when I call some people uncle and auntie today, they get mad at me, but I'm like, hey, that's how I was raised. You know, if I call you by your name, it's disrespectful. My father was here, I'd be in big trouble. Okay? It's called respect. So the translation of father and son's analogy is a respect of how you see the Supreme Being. And a translation was meant to mimic that respect. It wasn't meant to be literal. Because remember, the Bible didn't say Father. It's a translation. Yes? That's mm-hmm. wrong. So what we're proving today from the New Testament, even though it's been distorted, is that Jesus is still Jesus, and tomorrow from the Old Testament will prove God is God and God isn't Jesus, and say Jesus isn't God. And we're trying to cross analysis, we will do a cross analysis in such a way that there's no doubt left that from the perspective of that faith, from both angles, God to Jesus and Jesus to God, they're two separate, if that makes sense, Isha. Thank you for saying that, Isha. Jesus himself says he is a servant. What is our kalima shahada? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. We say Muhammad Sallallahu is Allah's servant, dead messenger. Right? So Jesus himself says in John 13 verse 16, I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Both servant and messenger is being articulated. He's articulated that he is a messenger and he's also a servant. And in the Quran, I am indeed the servant of Allah. These were the first words Jesus spoke when, he, when Maryam alayhi brought him. He said, Inni Abdullah, I'm Allah's servant. What else do we learn? Okay, if we say divine, God, does God need to sleep, everyone? Yes or no? Yes or no, sisters? Does God need to sleep? Does God need a break? Does he have, uh, does he get thirsty? When we know from Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum, la ta'khudhu sinatu wa la no. Allah doesn't even yawn, he doesn't even get, you know, tired, forget sleepy. You understand? There is a very clear cut distinction between divine characteristics and mortal characteristics, human characteristics. We find in the Bible, and I'm not going to keep on reading all this because I don't want to take all your time tonight, but we find that Jesus ate in Mark. We find that Jesus sat on the table and he ate with the people. We find in John that when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? So if Jesus is God, why is God eating and drinking? Remember, the Jews... The Jews had this issue with Muhammad sallallahu and they instigated this to the munafiqeen and the munafiqeen started saying this ma li hadha ar-rasul ya'kul at-ta'am wa yamshi fi al-aswaq what kind of prophet is he he eats food he goes to the mall astaghfirullah we saw the imam in the mall today astaghfirullah we need to fire this imam we saw him in the disney so astaghfirullah and then we saw the macy's this was exactly what they thought. A prophet is so divine, he shouldn't be eating or going to the mall. You understand this? Quran cut this right away. This is what they say. What kind of prophet is he? goes to the mall, he goes shopping, he goes and eats. To break that understanding or that rhetoric that this person is somewhat divine. He's human. He's human. He has needs like any human. Muhammad Wasallam is a human. Uh, Isa Islam is a human. Allah has given them some great distinctions which other humans don't have. As Allah said, فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ These are messengers. We've given some virtue over the other. It's just the way Allah has made it. But they're still human. So you find also from the Qur'an that he also asked Allah for the tablecloth and also he ate to them, so he is mortal, he's a human being. He also slept. In Matthew it says, Jesus was sleeping, the disciples went and woke him up. But we know in the Quran, Allah does not sleep. 
Remember, these are very important points. They're small, but they mean a lot. Don't say, well, the Christians understand it. No, they understand what they understand. Your Quran is clarifying their understanding and also enhancing your understanding. Does that make sense? It's giving us a clear picture. What we're trying to understand from the New Testament today is that Jesus is a human being. And He's not God because a lot of people consider Him to be that. Not only was he human, but we find other characteristics of human that he was circumcised, he was baptized, and he was also tempted by the devil. Things that happen to humans. Humans are tempted by the devil. Is that right or wrong? What did Shaitan say to Allah when Allah kicked him out at the time of Adam? What did he say? I'll mislead. And what did Allah say? Except for my selected ones, my protected ones, you won't get to them, right? He said, I'm going to mislead humanity. If Jesus is God, how is the devil luring him? Does that make sense? Jesus, Shaitan said to Allah, I'm going to take all of your humanity. I'm going to attack them. Allah said, the ones that are my selected pious ones are protected. So the fact that Jesus was tempted by the Shaitan means he wasn't divine. He's human. Let's talk about his belief. It is said that he himself said in John, For the Father is greater than I. Meaning Allah is greater than me. And in the Quran he says, You are the exalted in power and the wise. Who is he talking about everyone? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He believes in a higher power. He, i.e. the higher power is unseen. He says, no one has ever seen Allah, but Allah, the one and only. It's in John. And in the Quran, لَا تُدْرِكُ الْأَبْصَارِ وَهُوَ حَفِصَةً لَا تُدْرِكُ الْأَبْصَارِ وَهُوَ يُدْرِكُ الْأَبْصَارِ وَهُوَ الْلَّتِيفُ الْخَبِيرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no vision can grasp him. Musa as I told in the tafsir two nights ago, Musa spoke to Allah so much. Yes or no? Such a beautiful relationship. Imagine the different tones that he spoke to Allah with. His anger, his frustration, his sickness, his worry. Like he talked to Allah in so many different states, right? How did Allah respond to him? Such a beautiful relationship. And then this day, he says to Allah, Rabbi arini anzur ilayk. Allah, we've talked enough. I want to see you. Allah said to him, Lan tarani. You can never see me. Allah exposed a, a sliver of His beautiful light to the mountain and the mountain became dust. You cannot see Allah. And if Jesus is God and we're seeing Jesus, then that means that He's not God. Because Jesus Himself says, no one has ever seen God. But God Himself. God could see God, no one could see Him. And as I said, the blessing of paradise is that we will see Allah, hey, inshallah. Inshallah, we want to see Allah, and that's what we're working hard for, inshallah. Yes. And that's where it gets all confusing, right? And I said, we're not going to go into the confusion, but we just want to articulate that there is something very questionable here, right? So that's a very good question. I said, if you look at each, diff- each description of who Jesus is to Protestants, to the Catholics, to the Presbyterians, to the Baptists, it just gets more and more confusing. He prayed to Allah. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed, as it says in Luke. It says that he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed. Christ does not disdain to serve and worship Allah, nor do the angels, those near to Allah. Those who disdain His worship and are arrogant, they will gather, He will gather them together unto Himself to answer. The Quran says, Isa never shied away or shunned worshiping Allah. He worshiped Allah. Isa is saying this, it's in the Bible, and Allah is saying this in the Quran. They are collaborating, yes or no? The text makes a sense. It's, it's the same person. As I said, we want to prove from the Bible what's in the Quran. You don't want to prove from the Quran who is Jesus. We want to see it from the Bible. And he also said, there is nothing like Allah. You have never heard his voice nor seen his form, as he said in John. It's recorded in John. 
And in John, in an Isaiah, it's recorded that Allah says, I am God and there is none like me. Very clear articulation. You will not find a clear articulation in the Bible that Jesus says, I am God. Remember that. There is alluding to certain things Jesus said to make out that he meant he was saying, I am God. Now, Allah didn't say in the Quran to Muhammad Wasallam, I am Allah. Did he say that? He said what he said to Musa السلام, before Isa السلام, reiterating that in the Quran. When he met with Musa السلام, what did he say? Innani anallah. I am Allah. That's my name. La ilaha illa ana. I am the only God. Fa'bud me, worship me. Does that make sense? Who Allah introduced himself to. Musa alayhi salam, that is being reminded in the Holy Quran that was said in Isaiah but for some reason it was made murky or muddled between that time and then the 600 years and that's why Allah used the Torah not the Quran Allah could have said Oh Muhammad I am Allah He could have said that yes but he said I said it to Musa alayhi salam. it gives more legitimacy over the claim that Jesus may have been God. Because God is God, no one else is God. And as the Quran also says, there is nothing whether like unto Allah. No one can do anything without Him. Musa Islam always turned to who? Allah. Isa Islam turned always to Allah. Muhammad Islam always turned to Allah. Even in the Bible, Isa Islam says, and it's quoted by John, uh, book 5, verse 30, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear. Meaning, I have limited capacities. You and I can see what's in this room. Can you see what's behind this drape, anyone? Can anyone see what's behind that curtain? There is something behind the curtain. Can you see what car is behind that curtain? You cannot. Your eyes and your senses are limited to a certain area. Allah's abilities are not restricted. Allah can see here beyond, way beyond anything and anyone. So, as Isa Islam says, I judge only as I hear, meaning I have limited capacity. What's the connection now between Isa Islam and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And we'll end with this today, inshaAllah, uh, and we'll prepare for the next class. What is the correlation? If Isa Islam is a prophet, and he is not God or the Holy Spirit. And we believe Muhammad Sallallahu told us about Isa Islam through the Holy Quran. Did Isa Islam say something about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is there a possibility? Because remember, the Jews were told about Jesus. Jesus came and the Jews didn't accept him. Make sense? The Jews didn't accept him. The Christians who became Christians from the Jews but the people who stayed firm to the word of Musa salam, and stayed to the Torah, they didn't accept Jesus. But it's written in the Torah, Jesus was coming. And it was written in the Bible that Muhammad is coming. That's one of the reasons the Jews were very interested in Muhammad salam, because they were waiting for that person to come. And so they gave him harbor in Yathrib, in Medina. But the one thing that bothered him, although all signs of the Torah pointed that Muhammad Sallallahu is from Allah, the one thing that bothered them, he's from the Arab and he's not from the children of Israel. How come he's not from our blood? Because almost every messenger came from Bani Israel, except for five, they came from the Arab. How come this one didn't come from us? And so, they're still waiting. They're still waiting for their Messiah, their, their Messiah, Messiah. So did Jesus say anything about Muhammad Sallallahu What Isa Alayhi foretold, which is in John 14, 15, 16, and 26, is he said that if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, he shall give you another, not the same, another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Could you guys remember these three words? Another comforter and forever. Just remember these three words. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, 
the spirit of truth, meaning Jibreel, which proceeded from the Father, who brings a message from Allah, shall testify of me, and he will also share, uh, shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How will it be when the Spirit of Truth will come? He will guide you into all truth. Sorry, Spirit of Truth meaning the same thing as Comforter. Comforter, Spirit of Truth. Keep these two words. He shall hear that he shall speak and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me and he shall receive of mine and he shall show it unto you. And I'm asking you. There's so many hinters here. Who is he talking about? God will send someone who is considered the comforter, the spirit, uh, and uh, the spirit that will uh, testify who is this person. And that person will also attest to me and what was sent to me. Tell me, who is he talking about? Who is he talking about? Did the Qur'an not say that we share with you what, what, about what, what was given to Isa a.s.? Does the Qur'an not describe Isa a.s.? Did the Prophet Muhammad s.a.s. not talk about Isa a.s.? I'll give you at the end the hadith of that. He is actually telling us that Allah will send another comforter. And he will be forever. There has never been an ummah forever. Every prophet's time was a limited time. The ummah of Muhammad is forever till the end of time. From the time of Nubuwa in the Risala to the end of time. This is a very unique ummah. But the only way you'll understand it is as he said in the first line of John. If you keep my commandments. If you stick to what the book is saying, you'll recognize him. But if you mess up with the book, you will not recognize him. Let's go down to explain this. The person who Esai some prophesies is called a paraclete. What is it called everyone? Paraclete. In the Bible. This is the Greek word for paraclete. This word was deleted by interpreters and translators and changed at times to spirit of truth, comforter, and holy spirit. You saw those words, yes or no? You saw them in those verses. He sometimes was translated as saying spirit of truth sometimes it was said holy spirit and sometimes it was said the comforter but the real word the greek word that was the translation of the hebrew word is paraclete or parakalite and you know what parakalite means the praised one and do you know what muhammad means the praised one سَمَّيْتُهُ أَحْمَدْ وَمُحَمَّدْ When the grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu picked him up and he walked him towards the Kaaba and he said سَمَّيْتُهُ أَحْمَدْ وَمُحَمَّدْ I've named him Ahmad and Muhammad That is the praised one Remember the books are clear They had to be muddled The layers had to be layered on to make it confusing the Jews hold very close to their Torah. Go to Barnes and Noble and tell me if you can buy a copy of the Torah. You can't find it anywhere. I've begged many of my friends, and one of them, inshallah, sending it to me from Miami, a copy of the Torah. You don't find copies of the Torah. You want a Bible, you'll find it in a hotel room, you'll find it in maybe a bathroom, you'll find it in a mall, you'll find it in the airplane, you'll find Bibles everywhere. In jail, they give out Bibles, yes? But you know what? The Torah is held close. It is then said from the rabbis, God tells you do this, do it. Yes. Yes. So, what happened here is that the Bible was already distorted when it came into Latin, and of course that distortion became English, and from English 14 books were thrown out. The word was changed from the spirit, from the come from the praised one, to the spirit of the truth. So the parkalit is Greek, and its meaning is the one whom people praise exceedingly. 
the sense of the word then is applicable to the word Muhammad in Arabic because Muhammad means the praised one. Are you all getting this? All the books of Allah are very straightforward and clear. But all books were changed, altered, or hidden. The Tur- Turkey a few years ago found what they consider the original copy of the Bible. The Vatican asked for it. What did Turkey say? One million dollars per page photocopies. Because now they are translating it themselves. It's in Aramaic. They are translating that Aramaic one because that's the closest to Hebrew because the Bible was Hebrew slash Aramaic and then Aramaic, Aramaic was there but the first translation was in Greek. So they're going to go through it and they're coming through it as we speak. But the Bible spoke and the Torah spoke. The problem isn't the book, the problem is the people. And if it wasn't for Allah saying that He revealed the Qur'an and He's going to protect it, I can tell you, we would have changed the Qur'an by now. We would have changed it inside out, upside down. I was once doing a class and someone asked me a very weird question in the Muslim community. And unfortunately there are, there are people who believe this and I'm not going to go into that. He said to me, he asked me a question, I'm not going to even answer the question. He said like, what is this? And I said, well the Quran says this. This is what that thing is. And he scoffed and he got up and he walked out. And I said to myself after, I was hurt, and I said to myself after, imagine if that Quran was changed to justify what he was thinking. It could be possible, right? Allah saved the Quran in ways that we don't understand. It was saved in different methods at the time of Rasulullah Sallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu had his own Quran also. They had written their own. Remember, Umar radiallahu came into his sister's home and she had the papers, what she had written and what was written of the Quran. It wasn't Xerox machine or a computer printed from Microsoft Windows 97. It was written on bark, on, on palm, on different things. So they had it. But when the Qurra and the Khufaz died in the, in the battle of Harra, 90 of them, then it was made, the case was made to Uthman radiallahu that we need to make an authentic copy, one copy. And that copy was sent to the four corners of the earth. And then the Hufaz, the Qurra, the people who memorized it, because that book was again in what they call the Kalapani incident. There was a war when a lot of Islamic texts were thrown into the rivers, into the ocean. And the water became black because of the ink. But the Qur'an was ready in the hearts and minds of people, and it still is. It still is. There's a reason why Allah is protecting this word. Because you are not the person who is important. It's going to get to someone before the day of judgment who is important. If Allah has given us knowledge, don't tap, pat yourself on the back. You're nobody. Allah is using you as a tool to get it to someone else who's going to use it. That's why Rasul Ali Hassan said on Hajjat al-Wada, بَلِّهُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Even if you don't want verse to spread it, because فَرُبَّمُ بَلَّغٍ أَوْ عَالَهُ مِنْ سَالِعٍ Whoever gets it may understand it better than you. There are many things that didn't make sense at the time of the Sahaba. But because they passed it on, it's now making sense to people today. And there's things that don't make sense to us today, may make sense to our grandchildren tomorrow. But there's a reason why the word had to be kept and preserved. And that's why I tell you all, Qur'an is the Qur'an, not the translation. They say in Urdu there's a 1920 ratio. You can never translate Arabic fully into English. You can never translate Arabic into Urdu. You can never translate, remember it was translated first in Persian. It came to the subcontinent area through Persian language. Right? Farsi. From Farsi to Urdu. From Urdu to English. The books that we have today in English is not even a quarter of the books and texts that have been translated into Urdu. And Urdu is maybe two thirds of what was translated into Farsi. You understand? Our books and our text and our history that's been translated, we've lost it because of inability to translate it. So don't read the Qur'an thinking the English is the Qur'an. The English is not the Qur'an. The English is a translation of the Qur'an. There's a big difference. Remember this. So, here we find that because of translation, 
There was an element of hiding the truth by calling it the spirit of the truth, the comforter, or the Holy Spirit, when the parkalit, which is known as a parklet in English, is supposed to be the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but they made it assume to be Jesus came back. But Jesus said, I will send to you someone, the comforter. He did not say, I will come back. Moving on, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, last two slides, during the ascension, when the Prophet went up in Mi'raj, he said, I met Isa salam on the, which heaven everyone? Second heaven. I found him of medium stature. He wasn't too tall, he was short. He was reddish white. His body was so clean and clear that it appeared as if he'd just taken a bath. Isa salam, when he will come, his hair will be such, when people will see him, his hair will be as if it's dripping from water. You know, someone just washes their long hair, it's like dripping from water. It's, that's how he looks. He looks so fresh and his hair looks like it's wet. And in a hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned to the Jews that Isa salam, is not dead, he will most surely return to you before the Day of Judgment. So the Isa Islam is prophesizing that Muhammad Sallallahu will come and Muhammad Sallallahu is telling us that Isa Islam will come. What does this mean? That Isa Islam, then Muhammad Sallallahu and then Isa Islam will come again. And what Jesus promised. And a little while, and you shall not see me. And again a little while, you shall see me. Because I go to the Father. Isa Islam said, I'm going to leave. And then I will come back again. In between, I'm going to Allah. He didn't die. He didn't talk about I'm dying. And the whole story is going to be in three days from now, inshallah. It's beautiful. The story from the Bible that leads up to the crucifixion of... I'm not going to say who. It's in the Bible. It's so clear. You cannot miss it. But if the Bible is presented the way it is, it's not storyline. It's not in a story. It's all over the place. And that's why it's hard to create a story unless you seek it out. So in John book 16, verse 16, Jesus says, A little while and I'll be gone, and a little while I'll come back in between. I'm going to go to the Father. Last hadith, the Prophet Muhammad emphasized the importance of Isa Islam by saying, Whoever believes that there's no God but Allah, La ilaha illallah. Alone without a partner. Wahdahu la sharika la. And that Muhammad Sallallahu is his messenger. Wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. And that Isa alayhi salam is a servant and messenger of God. His word, Allah's word, breathed into Mary and a spirit emanating from him. And that paradise and hell are true. Shall be received by Allah into heaven. Subhanallah. Do you understand what we're talking about in this course? You may say, what relevancy is this with Ramadan? If you believe in Allah without shirk, and you believe in Muhammad Sallallahu and you believe Isa is, is Karimatullah, the word of Allah, and the spirit that was breathed into Maryam alayhi salam, and you believe that Jannah is Haq, and Jahannam is Haq, you are going to be received by Allah going to paradise, inshallah. Say inshallah. So what this means is not just to talk about it, there's a reason why we need to know this. There's a reason we need to know it, and especially in this day and age, because the framework is set for the return of Isa, and that's because the framework is set for the emergence of Dajjal, and that framework has been set by Gog and Magog. We need to stop being blind. It's happening before your eyes. Before your eyes, yes. Right here. The next few days, inshallah, today we spoke about Isa salam from the concept of him being human and not God, and that's from the New Testament. Tomorrow we'll be talking about Allah through the Old Testament proving that Isa salam can't be God. Does that make sense? I'm going to eliminate every angle. And these are boring classes. I accept it. But then we're going to go to the life of Isa salam and his death slash ascension. That's going to be, inshallah, Friday. And on Saturday, we may have to pause. Saturday, whoever's attending this class, Saturday will come at 5 o'clock. We'll have to stop at 6. 
because I have to go to UTD inshallah and I apologize it's my fault for overlapping but inshallah on Sunday we will cover the crucifixion or the curse of fiction okay and then inshallah on Sunday Monday we'll finish Isa and Judas who's Judas? does anyone know who Judas is? that's where the story gets interesting and then Isa is found return and why he's going to come back followed by two days in depth historical and holy text analysis of who Gog and Magog was it's a very in-depth Alhamdulillah I had a historian work on this for two and a half months I received the papers last night this is something I've been working on for so long but it's my credibility is only as good as the text of Islam I'm not a historian but Alhamdulillah I'm dissecting the notes and inshallah next week after these classes, these five more classes that cover the six classes of Jesus salam, we're going to talk about Ya'juj and Ma'juj to the point and if you guys want should I give you one point inshallah to how important Ya'juj and Ma'juj is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has been given the message to go and propagate to humanity he goes and stands on the mountain of Safa and he gathers the people and he says to the people if I were to tell you that there is an army race that will attack you in the evening or in the morning will you believe me? everyone remember that story? yes or no? If he was Sadiq in Amin his whole life, whole life, he was straight. He was a straight shooter, right? He said it straight. He didn't beat around the bush, did he? Why was he known as truthful? Because he said it straight. Why is the most important message of his life being delivered with a metaphor? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why did he give a metaphor? And he was pointing we will follow his finger and his finger showed us exactly where Ya'juj and Ma'juj was and then when he was in Medina he woke up and he was sweating and he was red and he was scared and he said the following words I'm giving you all this stuff away but I just hopefully to entice you to come back because this was a boring class it's all history he said, وَيْلٌ لِلْعَرَبِ مِنْ شَرٍ قَدْ اِقْتَرَبٍ Woe be to the Arabs from the evil that is close. فُتِحَتْ مِنْ رَدْمِ يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ مِثْلَ هَذِهِ The hole has opened up from Ya'juj and Ma'juj like this. In Arabic, he formed the number 90. This is the number 90. I'm not going to say anything else. This gets so interesting. This gets so interesting. But my theory, based on text, will continue next week. But before that, you need to understand who Isa is and how and if he died or if he didn't die and what happened. Did Isa go to Mecca before he went to Allah? All these questions will continue tomorrow. Jazakumullah khairan for your presence tonight. Uh, inshallah, we will start tomorrow at 5.30 again. Subhanallah, alhamdi, subhanakallah, alhamdi. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiru kana tubi laik. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a lot of, it's a bit boring.